uh, so it's a bit back. I think, uh, yeah, I was visiting us many years ago, maybe almost 10 years ago or something. Um, yeah, and today I'm, I want to talk about the uh, um, new search opportunities for action like particles. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, welcome any, any question. Sorry, I, I got a notification from Zoom that I should accept that is recorded. I think it's, uh, how do I do this? Um, is that working? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Then we are good, I think. We are being recorded. <laughs> um, wait, no, it's just... Um... We just click on the screen. Okay. Yeah, I had to accept that uh, I accept to be recorded. <laughs> Um, all right, so I welcome any questions so that uh, yeah, the seminar is more lively. So um, since this is going to be a seminar about uh, axon and axon and particles, let me introduce the subject. So why we are interested to this type of particles. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, historically, uh, axons were introduced to address the strong CP problem that is a problem of small, of small numbers, maybe. We know that uh, if we take the CD, we can write down this, uh, this operator in, uh, in our Lagrangian. And this is uh, an operator that is uh, violating CP, but if that operator exists with a generic uh, theta bar, then we know that uh, it would uh, uh, induce uh, uh, very large contributions to the Newton hierarchy double moment that we have not uh, yet seen. And this tells us that uh, the buffer in the Lagrangian is to be small. Um, and an elegant solution is in this uh, basic symmetry um, solution that is based indeed on the idea of having a uh, new spontaneously broken uh, global symmetry, um, associated to which we have an axion uh, that, that interacts with gluons. We study the potential of the axion and we see that indeed uh, it is minimized correspondingly to this uh, theta bar equal to zero. And, uh, and, uh, and, and in this way, we can address the strong CP problem. And then also what is very, very nice is that this, this particle can also be a dark matter candidate. So this motivated uh, and is motivating a lot of, uh, of searches uh, for, uh, for light actions. And in fact, the, the physics associated to, to these particles is very, very, very light uh, in physics. So we see this plot here that is taken from a, a Snowman's white paper. Um, uh, we see what is the, you know, uh, the predicted line for minimal uh, QCD axon models. So this uh, ASBZ and the SC uh, models. We know that the, the minimal models, the mass of the axon is uh, related to its uh, decay constant uh, by, this, uh, by this proportionality. And then we see that uh, the, the deep particles should be sub, uh, sub EV particles. And then we see also what are the, the present experimental bounds uh, some coming from uh, you know, laboratory physics experiments, uh, uh, some from, uh, from mass physics uh, and, and cosmology. And then if you're curious, um, there have been plenty of, uh, of studies in the context of no mass that shows that, uh, that, show that um, uh, a big part of this uh, QC action line could be probed uh, by uh, future experiments. So this, yeah. okay. Um, so the, 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 the question is, um, um, okay, we have these minimal models, uh, and, uh, but uh, are we sure that we expect to have uh, EV, uh, oh, thank you, that's usable, yes. um, EV uh, type of, of new physics? And, and in fact, we have to be aware that we really don't know what the new physics scale uh, is going to be. Um, and uh, we have uh, motivated, uh, very well motivated the new physics scales. Uh, like you no, know, the broadly speaking, the lightweight scale for uh, for WIMPs for dark matter, as well as uh, this uh, sub EV scale for QCD axons. Uh, but we don't know for sure if the new physics is going to be there or some in some other mass range, and uh, and this leads to um, um, the question: uh, What about uh, you know building models for dark matter at either lower masses or models for for, for uh, axons at the, at higher masses than the EV? And in fact, uh, um, what is uh, interesting is that uh, we can take the, uh, the theoretical idea of wind, wind dark matter, so dark matter that is based on this uh, uh, thermal freeze out mechanism and extend it to lower masses. Um, so you can go below, say, a few GD mass for wind dark matter, and still exactly, basically exactly the same models can work. The only difference that um, uh, 
we, we need to, you know, deplete the data matter abundance. Um, and this can be done efficiently only through uh, the exchange of the species particles. So basically, if your goal is to build the dark matter models uh, that are thermal and they use freeze out, uh, then you need also to add additional particles. Uh, and this motivates, motivates many of us to study the physics of dark samples. And, and the ones that have additional sector particles that are mediating the dark matter interaction with us, then we can have this result, the thermal freeze out mechanism. Uh, and so uh, this type of model is also working below the, the GD scale. Okay. Um, on the other direction, so we can take QCD axon models and, uh, and extend them to, towards higher masses. And there are studies for uh, extended uh, QCD sectors. For example, you can add uh, the dark su 3 with its own uh, axons. And then you can see that there are indeed uh, benchmarks that are uh, uh, predicting uh, axions that are more towards, uh, as you can see here, MEV, GEV range. Okay. So in both directions, I think that, uh, you know, that matter on one side and the strong superpower on the other side, uh, we can have, uh, you know, interesting models uh, in between, say, the KV and GV range. Okay. And then this motivates us in, in studying the phenomenology of these models. And uh, of course, in addition to, you know, uh, to, to this type of, uh, of, uh, of, of motivations, there are many additional motivations for considering uh, uh, life actions uh, or action life particles. Uh, um, if you think about, you know, models that have a, 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 a approximate uh, uh, spontaneously broken global symmetry, then you get these type of particles. Uh, and these can be, you know, in the context of the no supersymmetric models, you can think about the LMSM with uh, an approximate PQ uh, symmetry, or relaxed models, uh, or models to address anomalies like G minus two. So there are plenty of models that, uh, that give us these uh, MEV, GV, uh, axon-like particles. So having said that uh, as, as a motivation for us, um, then uh, what we can do as a phenomenologist is to write down the most uh, general uh, 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 effective field theory for us, for, uh, for now. So what you do is to take a, a pseudo-scalar and, uh, and you want to write down a Lagrangian uh, with an approximate shift symmetry. Okay. And, uh, and this limits uh, the, the, the operators that you can write down if you want to focus to the uh, uh, lowest dimensional operators. And then dimension five, this is all you can write down. So you have uh, the couplings of the of the out with all the gauge bosons, um, um, uh, the coupling with uh, with tenors, so quotes and leptons. In principle, you can also write down this coupling here with the uh, with the hips of the standard model. But it's uh, really easy to see that uh, you can redefine uh, uh, the coupling with uh, with tenions. Uh, using this uh, this uh, this shift uh, and uh, as well as the coupling with the with the, with the Higgs, uh, and then you reabsorb this operator. Uh, so there is some level of degeneracy. So this uh, this operator is redundant, and you can just uh, consider fermionic uh, operators. Okay. Um, so the, the the question is how to explore as much as we can uh, this uh, this CFP that we can we see written here. Okay. And, um, and then there are a lot of studies, uh, phenomenological studies, focusing on several couplings. So um, by far, if you want in the literature, um, this is the, the most studied coupling, the coupling with, uh, with photons. It is coming from uh, you know, these two couplings here after that we break the electric symmetry. Um, then if we think about uh, this particle result of being connected to the strong CP problem, we should be also Studying this coupling here with gluons. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, here there are very interesting features once that we study the coupling with quarks and leptons. And this, uh, this will be the second part of this, uh, of this seminar. Okay. Um, so, what experiments we can use to test all these couplings? And there are plenty of, of these experiments. So, we can think about uh, going to high energy, high energy colliders for LHC. We can study, uh, 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 we can use uh, low energy double experiments uh, um, for the lactone sector, fixed target experiments as well as uh, uh, meson factories. I'm collecting there 
few references, but there are many, many uh, more papers. And, uh, and for these seminars, what we are going to do is uh, to focus on puppies with uh, electrons and photons. And then these experiments here could target the meson factories. And uh, in particular, there will be two experiments that we'll uh, um, discuss in great detail. Uh, one is uh, called the dark press in the context of fixed target, and the other one is pioneer in the context of uh, uh, meson factories. So first, what I'm going to do is to introduce the experiments, and then we'll discuss about how to use these experiments to search for these uh, for these options. Okay. Um, so first experiment is dark quest. Um, uh, so this is a, a cartoon for the experiment. Um, so first of all. That was is placed, uh, uh, will be placed at Fermiab. Um, so it is, uh, here you can see the accelerator complex uh, of the lab. And, uh, and uh, you can see the, the exit here of the accelerator complex that is uh, uh, for, for the fixed target uh, uh, beam drive. Uh, that is taking uh, part of the beam chapter uh, proton beam and the 20 GV proton. And then sending it to, to, to this experiment here. So this is an existing experiment. It is uh, actually called the spin quest. And, uh, um, and you can see here that it's a beam pump experiment in the sense that uh, so here you have a target uh, followed by a dump. So this is a five meters of iron. And then afterwards, uh, um, you can see um, that we have uh, a muon spectrometer. So we have the several stations of the spectrometer here. As well as here uh, in the middle, there is a, a magnet um, uh, that is uh, um, that has a hole. So here the idea is that there will be charged particles that are passing through and they get a little bit affected. And, um, and what this experiment can do super well is to measure uh, muons. Okay. Are there muons that are coming here from the target or displaced muons that come from wherever after in, uh, either in the dump or afterwards? And, uh, and using this experiment, you can think about uh, you know searching for any uh, new physics particle that couples to muons and then give us some neon signatures. Um, now, what we have uh, proposed uh, a few years ago in this paper here was um, a, an upgrade of this pinquest experiment, uh, more recently called this quest. Um, and the, the main feature of this upgrade is adding uh, here a calorimeter. Um, so to be able to um, identify and measure um, all the uh, uh, you know, visible particles uh, that uh, can go through this, uh, this uh, detector, so not only neurons, but also no, electrons and photons, charged pions, and so on. Okay. And in such a way that we can uh, enlarge the uh, amount of uh, new physics models that we can look for at this experiment. Um, uh, so we can think about, you know, searching for dark photons, uh, uh, axions, as you'll see, and so on and so forth. Okay. And um, uh, so this is a quite a um, unique experiment because, um, um, so first of all, the, the, the geometry is very interesting because it's a compact uh, build up experiment. So we are talking about only five meters of iron here. Um, and uh, uh, actually here I have a table of, uh, of uh, past uh, uh, proton beam dump experiments, and we see that, uh, for example, Charm um, had a much, much longer uh, uh, baseline. Um, and then also, what is interesting is that we have uh, uh, so both the dump and, and, and this piece here, the detector, are magnetic. Um, and, and this is very useful for you know, um, uh, disentangling. Uh, so for, for searching for uh, very forward particles that would be taken for limited objects. So to have these uh, these uh, uh, particles that are not too much collimated, uh, as well as uh, to sweep away uh, soft uh, standard model radiation that otherwise would be background. Uh, yeah. um, and here yeah, in this table, you can see the comparison of the main uh, you know, numbers um, that are characterizing this backward experiment with the past being done or proposed being done experiments. Uh, uh, for the future. And you see this overall feature that this is uh, very, very compact, uh, uh, quite high energy, you know, 20 GB, um, and also uh, the, the, the expected uh, amount of luminosity is pretty high. Okay. And um, um, in terms of uh, timeline and these sort of things, so 
this is uh, the, the, the accelerator complex, the, the, the timeline of the accelerator of Fermiab. Now we can talk how you know things are on time and so on, but uh, um, so this is, I think, the latest that we have. And uh, so here you can see the, the random spin quest, and then afterwards there is some uh, open time uh, possible for that quest. Uh, yeah. And what is, uh, I find very exciting is that indeed we got the funded for, uh, for construction uh, and we heard from NSF uh, just a couple of months ago. So this is uh, pretty exciting. Yeah? And, uh, and then in principle, uh, you know, one could think about having a long term program at Fermilab using this experiment uh, and in principle collecting also much more data. So we can talk also offline about uh, you know, this, this amount of data, how you know, feasible it would be and so on. But this, I want to give you the message that it could be a long-term program uh, at, at Fermilab, okay. So this is the ex first experiment we use to search for axons. And, and then the second experiment uh, that I'm pretty excited about is um, uh, the so-called pioneer experiment. This is a totally different experiment. Uh, this is for uh, uh, measuring uh, uh, properties of charged pions. Um, so this also is an experiment that has been approved uh, recently, I think last year, uh, for, for field science data. And um, uh, so this is an experiment for pion decaying at rest. So you have the charge pion ring here. You stop here in this, in this uh, target, and, and then uh, your detector is all around uh, and uh, can search for the idea decays of, of these pions. And, uh, and um, uh, so there are a lot of standard model measurements that the experiment is planning to do. Particularly, if you want to measure much better these uh, reality case in the context of the standard model. And uh, here I'm looking what are the experiments that are giving us the uh, most precise measurements of, uh, of these decays. And then, of course, uh, uh, we, you know, as phenomenologists, we should think about what possible searches for, for new physics one can do using this, uh, this future experiment. Um, so having introduced these experiments, then let's see what, what we can do in the context of ALPS. And um, so let's start with ALPS uh, uh, coupled to, to photons. And uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Correct, at PSI. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the beam line is already there, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if there are any other questions on the experiments or, okay. Okay. Actually, I mean, I do, uh, so yeah. Are you gonna talk about like the targets? Oh, Pioneer? Yeah, Pioneer or... in the field. Uh, Pioneer, I'm not gonna say too much more about the experiment itself. Um, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if we have that. So. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> but, but just like for like, what was the target? What was the target here? Oh, oh, very good. So, so for, if, they, if you want for the, for, for, for um, uh, light in physics, we don't care much for the target, but we care of the lamp. So the main production is really coming uh, from the lamp, and this is uh, the lamp is made of iron. So you have a high Z material there. Yeah. Um, all right. So for, for apps uh, coupled to, to photons, so there are several ways of producing this app at the uh, West. And what uh, was pointed out, so for for, for, for a long time, the amount of experiments were studied uh, and uh, this production mode was uh, was computed. So this is, uh, you can see the, you know, you radiate the, the alp from this photo uh, uh, line. <laughs> and, uh, but it was pointed out that actually this type of experiments, the main production mode for alp, coupled to photons, uh, is coming from the secondary photon beam that is radiating the alp. And, uh, you know, this is a, 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 you know, a cartoon for the dump of that quest. And uh, the idea is that here at the beginning of the dump, you have uh, a lot of photons, uh, and then you can radiate uh, uh, the alp. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm taking this plot from uh, from the paper by Nikita and, and collaborators. Uh, and you can see that indeed uh, um, um, this, uh, this process number two has um, the easy in the main introduction of apps for, uh, for the mass range that we are interested to. 
And, um, and also another interesting aspect is that since that quest is compact uh, and, uh, and uh, it's easy for these photons coming from the Arctic to end up in the genetic acceptance. Uh, and, uh, and then also they are uh, uh, separated enough so to be seen as two separate photons. And here you can see that uh, you have the distribution of the angle of these photons coming from the Alp. And it's easy to uh, uh, satisfy the requirement of uh, them being separated by 35 centimeters or so. And uh, also, the geometric acceptance is very high. Here you can see the, uh, the geometric acceptance is a function of, uh, of the lifetime of the ALP for some you know, benchmark marks. And you see that you have a large acceptance precisely because of the fact that this, uh, this experiment is compact. So the, these particles will not go away, but will be really seen by the detector. And this is really useful to have uh, a, a good reach on, uh, on this type of models. Uh, you see the reach, uh, this was done for 10 to the 10 photons of target. Uh, not that much different if you ask for the photons being separated or not. So this is uh, the difference between the solid and dashed line. And, um, and, uh, and then you can see the reach in the context of all the other experiments. So this reach here now is done for 10 to the 18 photons on target. So this, uh, you know, the, the, the luminosity that uh, will be acquired like in a couple of years. And uh, in gray, you can see the regions already probed. And, uh, and then the other um, colorful lines are proposed uh, experiments. In particular, what you can see, um, uh, okay, at, at large couplings, you have bad proof for, for three photon type of signatures. And then here, down here, they are being done to this uh, forward experiment with this paper. So phaser T and blue is uh, after accumulating 300 inverse pentagon of data. And, uh, and then we have an A62 uh, running dark mode, uh, um, as well as uh, an A64 uh, and this uh, Luxy, Luxy experiment uh, that is basically at electron versus, uh, versus laser. And, and, and then you can see that indeed that quest will have access to new regions of parameter space, and there is a lot of complementarity with other proposals. Yes. Remind me, is the phaser period in first central barns, is that the uh, Hailumi era? No, uh, Hailumi would be 3000. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this uh, this plot here was done uh, asking for uh, ten signal events, um, and then the question is, uh, of course, what about backgrounds? And, and this is something that we are studying now. So this um, this experiment, uh, so that quest, uh, um, a lot of times you see re the the reach of that quest assuming zero background, and and this uh, this assumption is pretty good if you consider, for example, electron signatures. Photons are the most challenging. That's why. I, I presented them to you in, in this seminar. And, um, and um, so what are the sources of background? Um, so there are a lot of K-longs that are produced. And then K-long have, uh, have, have a lifetime that is uh, 15 meters. So it's easy to produce K-long that then decay after the dump. Um, and, uh, and the branch relation of K-long to three pions to six photons is pretty large. Um, um, so we, we are looking at uh, this type of, uh, of, of backgrounds, uh, just counting the number of uh, kilons produced and then came to six photons, we have a large number if we have a bump of five meters. Uh, consider though that this number is just a counting, uh, you know, we are not putting any cap, uh, we are just counting how many events we would produce with six photons. Now what we are working on together with experimentalists is to assess, uh, you know, how many of these six photons Photons events will look like two photons. Uh, because of course you can be those and more photons that are ending up in the in the detector. And and here we are quite uh, you know optimistic that we can uh, uh, you know reduce it to you know older a few or so, but this is still in, in, in progress, so I don't want to <laughs> show you uh you know uh exact numbers. Um but so this is one source of background, of course. Uh, I mean having a bit a little bit bigger. Would, uh, would kill this background. So we did the exercise for seven meters. You see that that uh, would completely kill this background because they do would be absorbed. Um, and then uh, also another interesting background is something that we found out uh, recently, and is the following. So um, here again, uh, we produce a lot of muons, and muons go through matter very, very easily. 
Um, so what can happen is that there are neurons that pass into the dam, and then they undergo this inelastic, inelastic scattering at the end of the dam. And then because of this scattering, they can produce phi zero here, and then the phi zero gives the photons. And this is again another source of background. And uh, and uh, and for that, basically, what we what we are doing now is uh, um, there are two things. One is using the massive solution uh, because you know if you have an alp, uh, the alp would be generically would have a different mass than pi zero, as well as there is the idea of putting some fish shower detector here so that you can see if there is something some photons that are coming directly at the from, from the end of the dump. Okay. So this also will uh, increase our chance to have a, a, an experiment that is uh, uh, background less or with a very, very small background. Okay. Um, all right, so this is for minimal uh, uh, axiom models coupled to photons. Then you can think about the variations of this model. Um, I motivated these axioms from the strong CD. You can think about having the coupling for the axiom with gluons. And then what happened? So let's let's think about the, just the other couple to new, uh, sorry, to, to, to gluons. Then this coupling would induce the mixing of the alpha with the phi zero of the sun and mole. Um, and, uh, and, and because of this mixing, uh, um, the alpha will also get an induced coupling of photons because the phi zero comes to photons. So this coupling will be uh, you know, suppressed by this mixing in gold square, but it's still there. And then, of course, this coupling can have also additional UV uh, contributions. But certainly, there is this uh, you know, unavoidable contribution that is coming from the gluon coupling. And uh, so, this is the first uh, uh, consequence of this uh, gluon coupling. And the other one is that um, uh, if you couple two gluons, then you will use also uh, other production modes of the alpha, as for example, from pion decays. Uh, so you can have these charge times going to a to a in alpha a positive neutrino, okay. And uh, and then for that, uh, what you can do is to use the pion experiments that uh, I introduced before. Uh, in particular, you can uh, look for this key mode here at all the uh, pion experiments. So there was this pion experiment in France as well as pi data and PSI. And um, so these two experiments were giving us the best measurement for this standard model decays. And these are very suppressed. Uh, if you look at the match ratio, these are very small, either because of density suppression or phase phase. But then uh, in principle, this decay here is, uh, is not suppressed. Uh, so not by helicity or, 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 or kinematics. So we can compute that. Uh, so we have Monte Carlos that are generating uh, the decay mode. And, uh, and, and this is coming, uh, so in models where you have the other couple to gluons, uh, this is coming from diagrams like this, uh, where the, the alpha has this mixing with the phi zero. Um, you, you can write down the amplitude, uh, and you see that the amplitude will be dependent on form factors, uh, actually one of which this at zero is not really uh, important because we give an additional contribution, uh, the branch ratio that is, uh, 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 suppressed by the mass of the lepton over the mass of the pion, so we can negate it. And this first one factor is actually, uh, so uh, there is another model of uh, uh, theorem that is telling us that this uh, form, up, form factor is close to one, as long as the momentum exchange is small. Um, um, so typically, you can use uh, this information about the form factor to compute the branch ratio of this uh, mode. And uh, you see that, as expected, you don't have any crazy suppression. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, um, and uh, once that you have to use the alpha, then you can see how it decays and it can decay to photons uh, because of this induced uh, coupling. But it can also be invisible if it is too much, uh, no, if this coupling is too small. So we studied both cases. Uh, uh, so this case here with photon signatures, or this case here in which the alpha is invisible. And first, what we did was to reuse uh, all the analysis of pi nu and pi beta. Um, so at pi nu, uh, what they, they, they give us uh, is the, um, uh, they, they measure the energy distribution of these positrons. 
Of course, if you produce also an ALP, uh, the, the energy distribution of the position will be different than in the standard model. And, um, and uh, what, uh, what this paper here did was to give us residuals. Uh, so we have the spectrum of, uh, of uh, that is detected here of uh, 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 electrically charged particles. And, uh, um, and then we can uh, compare this, uh, this residuals with what is predicted by this ALP model. I think in the case uh, in which uh, uh, you know, the ALP is invisible, these are two distributions to different masses. Or uh, in the case in which uh, uh, the ALP is visible, you see that we have a different, uh, different distributions because at that point, uh, some of these photons can, uh, can get into the detector to modify this uh, energy that is uh, uh, recorded by the by detector itself. Um, so this is what we have done. And, uh, and uh, as you can see, this is just uh, reusing data uh, that uh, uh, was collected for a standard model measurement. But we see that nevertheless, it can give us really interesting bounds of us. And we've seen a couple of slides. And, uh, and then also the other experiment that we can use is this pi beta that was the other old experiment measuring the cell density model. Um, the model. And the phi zero was, is going to photons, and this is exactly the same signature that we can get from here. Um, this is a uh, cartoon for this uh, phi beta experiment. And, uh, and then uh, um, <laughs> photons, uh, if you look at photons coming from here, the photons are basically back to back because phi zero and phi plus are the same mass, you know, more or less. Um, this is not the case uh, if you have an out that has, uh, that has a generic mass. And here you can see the distribution for this opening angle between the two photons. So this is data. Uh, in gray, you can see the uh, standard model uh, prediction. This is actually what we are simulating considering their smearing and, uh, and uh, um, uh, energy resolution. And the several colorful lines are the lines that you get from an ALP with different masses. You see here 130 and 130. But if you look at numbers, so we have information uh, for opening angles until like 60 degrees. Below that, we don't have any information whatsoever from the experiment. Um, and, and, and these already tell us that if the ALP is, uh, is too light, uh, it's very hard to, you know, to use this data. We will not get any information. Also, we don't have residuals. Uh, so what we did was to require that the integrated contribution in this, uh, in this uh, input range is a smaller than the experimental uncertainty of the standard model branch ratio that is very, uh, you know, a conservative uh, uh, bound. And, and doing that, uh, actually, we go to these, these numbers here. So this is uh, the bound from pi nu. This is from pi pi beta on the missing angle square. And you see that the missing angle of the level of 10 to minus 2, 10 to minus 3 almost could be reached, just reusing all the data. Uh, and uh, also in terms of branch ratios, you see that basically if you are here, you can have branch ratios at level of 10 to minus 9 or so. That is obviously a very small uh, branch ratio. And, uh, and as I said, it, you know, high beta, we can't hit here because uh, below here, um, the, you know, the opening angle would be too small uh, to be compared to what the experimental collaboration gave us. Okay. And then the question and something that we are working on now is to understand, uh, you know, how much more regional parameter space we can explore using Pioneer. At that point, you know, once that we have this experiment, we can do target with analysis. Okay. Um, Fine, I ask. Mm -hmm. So I'm not familiar with the Pioneer detector. You mentioned yeah. that it has a calorimeter. Yeah. Um, in the visible A channel, yeah. is it segmented in any way that you can see the electron and two photons separately and kind of reconstruct the whole? Yes. That's, uh, yeah. If, if, uh, if it is prompt, uh, if everything is prompt, you can uh, okay. reconstruct. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So in principle, I'll give a signal you can reconstruct the, the axion mass. Everything. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's why we, we think that it will be quite uh, exploring quite a bit more of that of um, the space. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Then you might wonder how how these experiments are performing compared to other experiments. Uh, and this becomes more of a model dependent question because uh, uh, you know we 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 um 
we constrain with these experiments the mixing with phi zero. Uh, um, if you suppose, if you think that we have a minimal model in which the mixing is also giving rise to the uh, coupling of the output photons and uh, everything is determined, and then you can compare to other experiments. But then, uh, you know, this, this with here is also model dependent because they could be unique contributions that are changing the photon coupling. But having said that, if we assume to be this minimal uh, regime, uh, then this is a comparison of the uh, phi nu and phi uh, uh, beta bridge that you see in blue, and other experiments. So you see that down here, there are uh, old mean band experiments like Charm. Uh, then here, there is a lab. This was a three photon uh, type of search at lab. Uh, Electron beam dump, as well as this, this yellow curve here below, here there is the, the region of that west. Okay. So you see that putting uh, everything together, we can uh, constrain everything below the defined mass. Okay. And it's very much complementary what we can do a final experiment at a beam dump. Of course, I mean, at a certain point, this, this region will close, um, so you cannot go to, to tiny couplings, but you see. With this, uh, with this type of couplings, we can close everything to the final mass. Okay. Um, all right, so this is all I wanted to say about the uh, photon couplings. I don't know if there are any other questions on this. Yes. So like uh, in the dark west experiment, so is there a possibility of moving the, pol the polarization of the reduced photons? And the what? Like the polarization of the final state photons. The polarization, you yeah. said. Or can I like use that and if I can use it like in separation of my ground versus the floor? Mm, my feeling is that no, but uh, one should look into that. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can do anything in that direction, but maybe maybe should think a little bit more. But I'm a little bit negative on that. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so the, the second thing I wanted to to uh, to discuss with you is the possibility of having uh, ALPS coupled to, to leptons. Um, and we see that there are both some theory aspects and phenol aspects that are quite interesting. And uh, just for, con um, for, 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 for being concrete, I will consider the coupling to electrons, but then we can really uh, you know, extend it to coupling to, to muons, and it's very, very similar. Um, so, the, the, the EFT that I'm going to consider is this type of EFT where you couple to charge electrons as well as neutrinos. And what is interesting here is that uh, there's a bit of confusion in the literature in the sense there are claims uh, like um, this coupling here with the toxic mu is not feasible, but this is not actually true. So if, uh, it depends a bit on the basis that you are considering, but the, the, the right statement is that. Uh, uh, since uh, at the classical level the, the lepton number is conserved, then uh, if you if you want to compute this type of decays, only two of, out of the three couplings are entering. So one is the one combination is uh, sort of the random, uh, but the, it's not true that this is uh, not feasible and it should be equal to zero. That's the uh, overall idea. And this uh, you can also see it, uh, you know, just computing the branch ratio. So this is a big equation, but uh, wanted to point out a couple of features, uh, namely that you have several contributions to this decay. Um, now you should be computing this diagram where the alpha is related from the charge lepton and from the neutrino line. But you see that there are some contributions that are related to the press, and one contribution that is not. Now, if you look at this contribution that is not the LCT suppressed, uh, you see that it goes with this combination of couplings and uh, this combination of couplings uh, goes to zero if you impose SU2 in this Lagrangian, the, the weak SU2. Um, so the, this uh, contribution here is only coming uh, from those models uh, that uh, have some SU2 violation in the UV that, that lead to a coupling of the alpha that is SU2 violating. Okay. And we see that this is interesting because this is uh, generating really large contributions to this type of decays. And, uh, and we are trying now UV models uh, for uh, uh, you know, inducing SU2 violating couplings of, uh, of that type. So we are finding, for example, uh, uh, you know, contribution from uh, higher dimensional operators that are inducing uh, SU2 violation. And, uh, and what we are seeing is that yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's doable to have uh, you know, uh, large couplings of, uh, of this point here. 
And uh, we can see the same type of physics in a different basis. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the feature of uh, Alps that you can always, uh, you know, uh, redefine and change basis. Uh, and uh, um, so you can write down the Alps coupled to a, a, a current, the derivative of the current. Uh, and you see that um, this current uh, has several uh, uh, contributions. There is a, what I would call the standard vertex uh, to this gamma five. Uh, then there are anomaly terms, so the coupling of the arc with the gauge bosons of, of the standard model. And then also there is a vertex that has not really been studied. Um, there is this, uh, what we call a weak vertex, that is a coupling of, uh, of an arc with the value of such that and the neutrino. And, and this is the coupling that could go to zero, that you could infinite, uh, as you can see there. And, um, all right. Um, so you, you can compute any uh, charge current matching K uh, like this. And you see that uh, if you're in the weak preserving, SU2 preserving phase, uh, uh, you get something that is much smaller than the SU2 violation uh, because the size of this ratio of masses. Um, and then you know you can do the same exercise not only for pions, but also you know pairs or D meson, D meson. So, so this goes any kind that have this charge current uh, uh, interaction. And uh, and then, yeah, we were curious to see what are the possible bounds on, uh, on, on this model. And uh, so we started looking at, uh, at um, uh, past experiments. In particular, there was uh, this uh, syndrome experiment at PSI running in the 80s that was looking for this sequence here, this is the lead pion, we came to a three uh, charge leptons and then you know. This was done in the context of looking for light scalars, uh, but uh, you know there is nothing in the analysis that is telling us that uh, this was a scalar versus a pseudo scalar, so we can just re reuse their bound. And we see that the bound is as a function of the, of the lifetime of, uh, of, uh, of this new particle and its mass. And you see that we were able to pass branching issues as low as uh, 10 to minus 10, 10 to minus 11. And uh, so we can. Um, take that bound and impose it on our parameter space. And we do always the two cases of weak preserving, so SU2 preserving or SU2 um, violating. And we see again that for the SU2 violating, we get um, to, uh, we get reach on uh, uh, pretty small couplings, so that are 10 to minus 5, 10 to minus 6. Um, and uh, another question is again, what uh, can be done in Pioneer uh, searching for that? Um, we are studying it now, but here in this plot, you can see what uh, we would be able to reach if uh, Pioneer uh, will be able to uh, test transitions as small as 10 to minus 11. And with the amount of pions that they have, this seems doable. Of course, is, uh, you know, the devil is in the details. Uh, so we'll have to see if this 10 to minus 11 can be reached. Uh, but if so, uh, new, new parameter space, uh, quite a bit of new parameter space could be thought. And um, uh, so you might wonder if this is uh, how, again, how that performs compared to other other experiments. And here you can see the, the answer. So um, so these are uh, regions probed uh, by past experiments uh, using this uh, coupling of the alpha with charged electrons. Uh, so I did this bar. This was a, uh, um, a dark photon search actually for uh, the dark photon going to plus or minus, but again, can be reused to set the bound of the cell. You see it here. And here are electron beam dumps. And you see again all this uh, complementarity between uh, beam dumps, mm -hmm. beam factories, and, uh, and this kind of decays. Um, now, what, what is quite exciting is that in addition to this pion decay, there are a lot of additional signatures that have not been searched for at our experiment so far. So there is this pion decay, um, uh, exactly the same physics as the pion decay. Uh, as far as I know, there is no targeted uh, search. Uh, uh, there was this experiment at DNL, and what they do is to measure uh, the standard model decay in some specific uh, kinematic region for this plus minus. Uh, namely, the divide mass of the plus minus for 150 MPV. And this, uh, you know, uh, this could be plus minus coming from the alpha. So we can reuse this non targeted search to set a bound uh, on this K2 uh, positron electron, uh, positron uh, influence mass. And you see here in red what we get. Uh, and again, a much 
bigger region in this case of weak violating uh, because of the enhancement of the of the branch ratio. Okay. Um, so it would be nice to see if NA62 uh, will do this, uh, this search in the coming years. And then also there is also there, there is a new search that could be done at, L at the DLHC as well. Um, namely, at the DLHC, we could look for this uh, rare so the W could decay by positron in alpha and neutrino without them going to plus minus. Um, so this decay is only coming in the case of uh, our best two violating models. You see this combination of couplings that we will see on best two decay. And uh, there is no very good search um, yet. And uh, what we did was to study uh, what type of bound uh, we would get just uh, uh, imposing that uh, the, the width. Uh, this decay is not bigger than the, uh, the experimental uncertainty on the on the total width of the W, and uh, and then you see this uh, yellow region here that we are drawing just using uh, information in the width. Um, now looking at the uh, uh, rare decays of the of the W boson that, that we can find in PDGs, that there are some rare decays with some two charged pions uh, uh, that are being drawn at the level of F minus five. So just to guide uh, the eye, we put this line here at 10 to the minus five for the branch ratio into an alpha to see how far we could get uh, if uh, if we had the bound at level 10 to the minus five. And indeed, we could probe uh, you know, plenty of new regions of parameter space, even you know, if the bound would extend much larger masses coming from the WK. Okay. So it would be really interesting to see what can be done at the uh, at DAC. Does it adding a new decay channel like that to W mess up, for instance, the measurement of the W mass? <laughs> um, Could that impact the? Yeah, the I, I don't think so. Okay. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. especially at these values of branch ratio. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, this is uh, really focusing on uh, you know, new decay modes that are coming, especially in the SU2 uh, violating uh, case of this theory. And then you can compare to uh, you know, other decay modes that are there, both in the case of SU2 violation or not. And, and actually, in this context, there have been a lot of studies uh, for the case like this, uh, 3 by 8. Uh, you see a lot of uh, papers in the literature. And if you couple the out to electrons, so you get uh, a seven fold resource with k to by a. And then if you look, uh, if you couple to uh, left handed uh, electrons or if you look right handed uh, electrons, um, you can study the induced uh, uh, coupling that are uh, clever violating. And, uh, and indeed, you get, uh, you get contributions. Um, and, and then you can do the same type of calculations also for other level violating uh, decays like in this AA. Okay. And, um, and then again, you can uh, see what, uh, what data is telling us. Um, and uh, in particular, we used uh, uh, this, uh, this type of searches that you see here with data. Um, so there is a uh, by a with a equal to equal from NA62. Uh, a going to be plus or minus uh, from K tab uh, or uh, on, uh, from K tab and also this other experiment at the BNL, uh, as well as B to K A uh, with uh, A going to be plus or minus uh, uh, from LHCB. Uh, most of these searches are actually not targeted to, you know, looking for a resonance uh, going to be plus or minus. For example, this was. Uh, the, one of the LHCB searches uh, that showed us an anomaly in, in the past, uh, and they showed that it's B to K, B plus or minus in several few square beam beams, and this can be used to set the bound of this decay, even though they were not looking for specifically for the resonance. And even if they, they were not uh, targeted, um, they, 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 there was uh, um, some new reach of parameter space. So this was the plot that I showed you already. And this is what happens. Uh, uh, if we add uh, uh, this uh, level of violet indicates, uh, you see these gray regions. And you see that there are, again, new regions that are plot uh, that are pretty much complementary to this uh, uh, charge current decays. Okay. You see that overall, uh, you know, putting uh, everybody together and also considering what can be done in the future, 
we'll be able to improve uh, uh, a large part of the parameter space uh, out of the, the, the bound of supernovae from for, for the top. So that is uh, quite exciting. Um, of course, I mean, uh, having pointed out that there are these uh, new charged current decays that are important, then uh, one can redo a lot of calculations that were done uh, assuming that these decays were not there. For example, now even for beam dumps, uh, uh, there are you know, a lot of studies for uh, um, uh, production of bulbs uh, uh, in beam dumps uh, coming from decays like H5A. Um, but now what we can do uh, is uh, to add uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, charge current uh, decays like this. Uh, oh. And then do simulations for the pin downside in the past, uh, Chan or Dark West. Okay. Um, and also, you know, considering that this pin dump experiment uh, will be producing a lot of these light measurements, uh, here's the big number that we are talking about in the 10 to the 20 pions uh, at the Charm experiment. Uh, it was this old being dumped uh, that is much bigger than uh, you know what we can produce at the uh, time experience like this time here. Uh, so it will be really interesting to see what one can do in the context of this uh, charge current case for uh, for beam dumps. And and uh, we have done the exercise for charm only, and um, uh, yeah, we extended a little bit the region of parameter space here, large and massive, using this uh, charge current uh, um, decays. Okay. Um, all right, so having said that, so I, this, uh, this is the end of my talk. So what are the conclusions? Uh, so in this seminar, I wanted to highlight that there, is, uh, um, there are a lot of possibilities for uh, new light uh, with the coupled particles, in particular for ALPS. And uh, there is a lot of complementarity between what we can do at the green dance and the meson factories. And several of these experiments will come online uh, just in the near future, so it will be interesting to see what we can do. And then also theoretically, there is a, you know, one can find more uh, 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 production modes for these apps that were not pointed out uh, in the past. And in particular, I'm quite excited in the idea of, of studying theories for apps uh, that are weak uh, with violating that give rise to this uh, new uh, charge current mesodic case. Okay, right. thanks. Okay, so questions. So for this electron uh, in one, did you for that and using the electron? Yeah. No, uh, that's a good question. No, yeah. Because uh, uh, for one G week or the one thing is the same, for a larger week, mm -hmm. and then it, cover, it can cover all the way. Mm -hmm. But since it's a far off, so that's why the mass was covering the thing. Mm -hmm. But since your case, everything is so close by, yeah. I assume that you can cover the large distance. True. Yeah. True. True. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is something to yeah that we wanted to study more and yeah. we didn't. That's but like that, since you're using the photons, you can definitely. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Other questions? Is everything clear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so then I'm uh, the best thing.